Paul, it's uh, been just over two years now since you uh, you came and joined the Sheffield Steelers. Good time to reflect on the two years, the two successful years that have uh, gone by. If I can take you back to that club that you joined, um, was it April uh, 2015? Go back to that time and, and what you came into and, and was it the club you expected? Yeah, it was the club I expected. I mean, you know, we all know. I mean, I've been in the league so many years with Coventry. You know, we, we played against the Steelers. I played here back in the early days. It was the club I expected from, from the outside, but not from the inside. And uh, a lot's gone on. A lot's changed in that period, David. Uh, you know, when it became apparent that there was going to be a coaching change, I mean, I'm not going to dig up old ground because, you know, you move on. And uh, But when it was apparent there was going to be a change, I'd, I'd verbally agreed a, a three-year deal in Auburn, and then things happened really quickly here. And, uh, and I ended up uh, joining this club, and I'm, I'm very, very happy I did. I'm very, very happy that I'm here. Uh, and there was a lot of things that, prior to me joining, that I wanted to bring. Was club. that through the experience you'd had in, in first Troyer and then secondly in Albuk? Yeah, absolutely. I think when, when any time you, you go away to a, a different culture, I mean, these are both Paul A nation countries and, you know, they do the things the right way. I mean, there's so much we do here that's so much better. The media side of things here, I think, is far, far more advanced than anything that I saw over in, in Europe. But from a purely plain, practicing culture, building that winning way, and then putting that product onto the ice. Things had to change here and, uh, you know, bits that I took from my days in Coventry. And I felt, you know, back in the day, we were the leaders in Coventry on some of the things that we did there. And, uh, and that showed in, in the success that Coventry had as a small budget team over that period. But then I, when I went away, and I wasn't on two great teams, they were two very different teams. You had to do a lot more teaching, a lot younger groups than they are. But when the opportunity came to come back, I always felt that one day I'd coach this club and, and I'm, you know, I'm very, very happy to be here. But it's been a lot of work. Pick up on one word, and it's used a lot, and the word you've just used there, culture. What is the Sheffield Steelers culture? Well, there's, I mean, prior to the, the, the Tony Smith days, I think uh, the club as a whole was, I mean, it's been successful for many, many years. No one's saying that. You know, when you come into the hot seat here, you know you've got to be knocking on the door every day. You know, that's the job. That's what it is. That's what it's like in Manchester United and Chelsea. And, you know, and we are that in British ice hockey. So you've got to, you've got to come in and you've, you've got to have a plan to hopefully take the club forward. And there's, it's a very good league. You know, over the two years that I was away, the league vastly improved. And over the last two years, it's, it's gone way, way higher than what was previously here with the quality of player and the quality of what teams do now. No, not just on the ice, away from the ice. And uh, a lot in my eyes had to change here and, and, and the owner's eyes had to change here to, to provide that product of entertainment on a day in, day out basis that the fans want to come and see. And I think, you know, when you're getting 7,000 people to games, that's the, the identity of what we're doing on the ice and what the club's so doing. So is culture and identity one and the same? Yeah, I think so. I think so. The club has to have a culture going forward, whether it's on the ice or off the ice. And uh, you know, and I know that what I I brought here has changed a lot. It's a very different club, and, and I'm not talking about anything that's happened in the past. I'm not because progression. It's time. You've got to you've got to move with the times. So what is different? What is different today that was not? In well, place? I wasn't here to say it, but what I brought in, that what we do now with a full-time strength coach, you know guy that does our full-time analytics, video coach, you know, we have a full-time assistant coach who's been in the game for many, many years. So there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of stuff that go around to making our players the best that they can be on the game night. And, uh, you know, the days where you turned up, you practiced for 45 minutes, you turned up 10 minutes before a session. And I'm not saying that that's happened here or anywhere else, mm. but it's happened in my time because everything moves on. You know, what you eat, how you eat, when you eat, what you look after, when you're monitored. The players are monitored every day on different aspects. So we wanted to bring in, this is a huge club with a huge fan base. And we wanted to bring in an identity to the club that 
We wanted to give everything that we had from a professional point of view, from what I learned away, and bringing people in who are experts in their fields to enhance what we do on the ice and, uh, and making it an enjoyable product. So, you know, my coaching head is I want to win everything. My general manager is we've got to put, and with Tony and everybody else, we've got to put something on the ice that the people want to come and watch. You also have got to put, <clears throat> with your general manager's head on, you've got to backfill. And you, you started that last year with young Shuja and Kirk. You've taken it another step further this year with, with young Kieran Brown. Is that part of the more the general manager's part that you, you, you're trying, if you like, see the day that maybe when Jono disappears, when Dowdy goes, you, you, there are these progression? Well, but there's two things. I mean, you know, we, we started this, like I said, way back in Coventry with, with Russell Cowley. I mean, who's just retired now? So this isn't something that we ha you know, I haven't done previously. And the gap between the Elite League now and, and obviously the EPL going, but the gap between the Elite League and the EPL is, is huge. It, it, it's not even in the same sphere. Now that's gone, the level, if you like, is going to be a little bit lower. So for us to get the best young British talent in, we have to grab them and bring them in to our fold and get them to understand what it's going to be like to be a professional, to train every day off the ice with Danny, to train every day with us, with the video analysis, with your diet, with your strengths, building them 12 months of the year, not eight months of the year, 12 months of the year, we're a 12 months of the year business. I said to Tony that, you know, being a British coach as well, I, I have a, you know, and I've been a national team coach for seven years, I have a, a vested interest, and we're an import dominated league, and that's the rules that I go by. Whether I agree with that or not is, is, is totally, it doesn't matter. Irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. But we have an obligation as the biggest club in the country to give the best opportunity to the best talented kids coming through. And we've spent a lot of time identifying players that we think going forward are going to be great professionals for the Sheffield Steelers. But it's not going to happen overnight and that takes a lot of work, a lot of time. The owner was totally behind that when I brought that to him in our original talks over two years ago. And now we're seeing, we're, we're in the second year of the apprenticeship of Liam Kirk and, and uh, <coughs> Cole Shudra. We've just signed a phenomenal young talent, 16 year old boy in, in, in Kieran Brown. They're gonna be with us every day. And their acceleration to become and to get to the next level is gonna be so advanced over them playing at the lower level. That's nothing against the lower level. It's what we can provide and the competition we can provide that these kids are going to be playing against every day. So perhaps is that part of the Steelers' identity as a 100%. club? And, and it's the, the it's part of the culture that you have to think. You know, in this job, you never know how long you're going to survive. But my job is to make sure that the club, whether I'm here or whether I'm not, is ready for the next phase. And I think the club over the years has peaked and troughed, peaked and troughed, peaked and troughed because of unstable ownership, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, now it's not. You've got an owner that's come in and has invested, a local man, who's invested a lot of his money into making sure that this team is going to be in a, in a good situation for many years to come. And it's, he's employed me and allowed me to employ people that can carry out that from a team point of view. How important is that relationship, the one between owner and coach? Is it probably the most important relationship in the club? Well, you've got to... You've got to You've got a very, you know, he's a very demanding man who wants to know what's going on so that the conduit, the line of communication has to be daily. And that's the only, that's the way it is. That's the way he runs his business. And I have no problem with that. I'm not hiding anything. I have no problem. We talk twice a day, every day. And you know what? 30 seconds. But just that we've done this today, we're doing this, we're doing the other. And, uh, you know, and then I'll go and spend time up in the office and do my general manager stuff up from the office with Sean. You know, he's the operations director. So... You know, we have a, a daily, daily, you know, conduit of information going between the pair of us. And, and that's the way it's got to work. It has to work that way. You know, the business is too big now for, for it not to be that way. So, and I have no problem with, the, with our relationship. And it's, it's the right relationship. It's the way a relationship should be from the general manager stroke coach to the ownership. Colton Fretter said to me, um, it's a completely different club on and off the ice two years ago to today. If we sit here in two years' time, what are the things we need to do then to elevate it to even the next level, to, to compete, if you like, with the bigger clubs in mainland Europe? Well, I mean, a lot of that comes down... I mean, 
to a hockey culture, a hockey way. You know, you, if you look at Sweden, you look at Russia, you look at Finland, I mean, it, it's in their DNA. It's part of what they are. I, I, I did a talk to some of the England coaches, the young coaches. I did a presentation to them. And, and it's amazing, you know, that they understand the game all the way through because it's their football. It's their premiership. And uh, something that was said at a coaching course the other day, if you have a coach who's coaching 15, 14, 13, 12 year old kids, he's coaching on what he learned 20 years ago. These guys aren't gonna hit pro for another 10 years. So the game is gonna change in 10 years to where it is now. And a lot of coaches are coaching on what they knew from 20 years ago. So there's a 30 year span of information. Actually, the game's not played this way anymore. And so what we've got to do underneath and what above is make sure that that information is, is filtered down. And, you know, and the governing bodies have to start looking at the people that are doing it, not the people that haven't. Because that's the only way it's going to get filtered down is how we educate all these other coaches at levels all the way down. So the kids coming up and coming through and I hear about ice time and I hear about the, it's a, just an excuse. You have to understand how the game's played now, how it's taught now, how it's trained now, and what it's required to make the professional level now. And so we're in a situation where that hockey culture has to change for us to move forward. But if you look at us as a club right now, we have people in place, that, like I said, from our doctors to our physiotherapists, to our coaches, to our strength coaches, to our video people, to our analytics people that are experts in their field. And we've all got to test ourselves. We've all got to go away every year and we've got to get better. We've got to understand what it's going to take to stay at the top because Cardiff are going to, Belfast are going to, Nottingham are going to, Brayhead are going to, Dundee who made the final four, they're going to. So there's no easy game. There's no easy route. And it doesn't just come down to money. It comes down to us wanting to educate the leaders. Who's educating the leaders? Because we're the ones that are basically putting that information out after that. So we've got to stay ahead of the game. And, you know, that's why we go to these coaching conventions. That's why we, 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 we go and study trips to other countries on what they're doing and how they're doing it. And, you know, we've got SHL coaches coming to us this year. We've got DEL coaches coming to us this year. We've got an American League coach flying over to see what we're doing now. So the whole thing, you know, you work together on this. And uh, it's not just little old Britain looking away. They're coming to us. So we're doing something right. The nation, I mean, you know, the league. Talk to us now about the Sheffield Steelers. You, you, you complete your second year, a successful second year. We have the emotion of that incredible playoff run. Cardiff, we're knocking on the door for two or three years <clears throat> and eventually kicked the door down and, and, and won their championship. You have to win that back. Take us into your mindset then of the changes that you wanted to see in the team that we will see on where we're sat right now for next year. And what goes through your mind the, and the process involved and then perhaps in some of the actual changes that, that, that have taken place? Well, I think any time a team wins, I mean, we won the playoffs and uh, unbelievable resilience that we had to go through to win them. But to win the league is a war, it's a battle, and uh, Cardiff won the league through the series against each other, against us. And uh, they got a couple of breaks along the way, but they were the deserved champions. And uh, we have to look at ourselves and think, well, how do we match up against them? We had a very long season with the, you know, the, uh, the cup competitions last year. And uh, <clears throat> we built a team wanting to win the league, but also we wanted to uh, be that team that got through to the next level of the, of the Champions League. But again, that comes down to, to money, you know, where the other teams are preparing five, six weeks prior to what we are. So I looked and you know, we're not, I'm not gonna sit here and give my secrets away on, on what we as a club, and we just had a whole week of meetings with all our staff on where we're looking to improve from recruitment to practice to training to type to people to what we do chasing that edge all the time but we were going to make we're going to make some adjustments in in our group where we feel we're a little bit bigger around our own net we're a little bit bigger around the opposition's net but we're not going to take away our speed we're not going to take away our transition because there's not a team in the league that comes at you like we do but there are areas where we got exposed and we were aware of that and Cardiff took advantage of that and ended up winning the series against us. So we've got to put that right. And, uh, but it's a great challenge. I have a great team. I have a great nucleus. We have a great team. We have a great nucleus. And we've just got to add to that. And the key is good people, Dave. I said it time and time again. If you employ good people, 
Good people want what you want mm -hmm. and they buy into that. And the people that can't won't last here very long. And, uh, but now we have that nucleus over the last two, three years, if you like, uh, of players that understand what it's like to, to play here. And there is pressure here. There's no doubt about that. And it does affect some people. Is that perhaps why you have signed this year older, but more experienced guys? We, we talk about the two defensemen as well, two very level-headed, steady-eddy, experienced professionals. We sign, we try and sign good players. We try and sign players that can take on what's required here. And uh, it can phase a lot of people when you come in here and you know, you scrutinize the way we are, especially in Britain. I mean, sport in Britain is probably scrutinized harder than anywhere in the world. And social media and some of the players get into the social media and then bang, it hits them back. So <coughs> we're very focused and we're very, we, you can't worry about what's being said. Well, you know, we have to keep that together. We have to be strong together. And, uh, you know, so we have to teach that side of things as well. And we talk about that a lot in the social media world that we're in right now. And, uh, but it's not the age, it's what they can do. So we're looking at players that have played in the NHL, the SHL, the Finnish league, top players in the DEL. Now you're not gonna get them players on the way up because we're 100 to 200,000 pounds a year away from what they can be. So when they've made that move and they're looking to come down, that doesn't mean they're bad players, that means they're great players for our level. But we're, you know, we're reaching for the stars, we want the best that's possible. But 35 now is 30 of 15 years ago. The guys look after themselves. We have a strength coach that you know, takes care of their diet, takes care of their food, takes care of everything from their body point of view and works with them on that. So, and these guys are used to that. So sometimes you can look at age and think, oh, oh. And we're gonna sprinkle around that some younger guys and some energy and you know, you need the, you need the, the whole bowl, the whole circle to complete what you feel you require for your team. But uh, I don't apologize. I'd sign someone who's 45 if he's good enough. He's gonna make Sheffield's dealers better. He'll come here. Or 16 like I just have with Kieran Brown. Talk to me then about um, the speed it all happened. It's, it, it, was, that, was that a plan, that it was all going to happen very quickly and the, the signings were going to come one, two, three, four? Or is it just the way it's, the, the cards are falling this time? No, I think, you know, we're, we're a business that we don't have to sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait for something to come along. And if it doesn't come along, crikey, where are we? You know, we, we signed a good core of our players back during last season. The, the, the business of hockey has totally changed now where, you know, July and August was where you picked everybody else up. You don't. You lose a lot of good players after May and June. You know, you lose a lot of good players in January and February. So we have to stay ahead of the game. And if we believe that you're an asset to our business and you enjoy it here and we want to keep you around, we get it done. And if the player comes along, I mean, you know, Mark Matheson, I chased Mark for over a year. I knew about Tim Wallace for over a year. Obviously, I saw what the, you know, Marquardt did in, in Coventry last year, and when Desbian moved on, I thought that would be a great opportunity for him to step in and give us that type of player. And so, even though we're probably ahead of the game than most of the other clubs, maybe Cardiff are. I know Cardiff are probably going to want to retain 90% of their group last year, and why wouldn't they with the success that they had? So, there's no, it's, it's not about rushing into it. It's about the right player at the right time and when he comes in and then if we can get everybody done a month six weeks prior to a start and everything else starts Danny starts with the off-eye stuff sending the guys the videos what they're going to do what's expected every day so we build that momentum in we've had study trips from players this week flying in seeing what we're about so the days of signing in July and August that was 15 years ago good players don't wait until July. They, they want to get signed, they want to know where they're going to be. And good clubs want to know where they want to be. You, mentioned, no you just mentioned one name there that, that won't be coming back, a man who scored just down there only a couple of months ago. The Debbie N facto, a massive loss, perhaps not so much as a player, but as the whole package of, of, of what he bought. So explain what he did bring to you as a, as a coach, having somebody like him on your team. Well, you know, I remember when I signed him and uh, I remember Sean saying, oh, there's some criticism, his points in, in the eBay and this, that and the other. And, you know, this league isn't just about 
the guys that get 50, 60 points a year. You know, the guys that get 20 points a year bring so much more in different areas. So it's about what are you going to bring as a whole. And, you know, when I did my research on, on Debian, you know, everything came back. And he's proved everything. All the research, you know, was true. A great leader, a great man, a warrior, does what it takes for his team, does what it takes for his teammates, and uh, a great ambassador. And I thought he took his game. The reason he played eight, nine years in the American League, some NHL games, is because when it came down to showing up, there's people like him were the reason we won the cup. Levi Nelson, he took it to another level. And uh, he's going to be sorely missed. But I'm very, you know, yes, when I saw the text, you know, can you talk, Tom? He's never said that, but he just rings me. I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Uh, and I was just waiting for the, for the call. And, you know, and afterwards I said to my wife, I was at home, it was about 11 o'clock at night, and I told her, and she said, what are you going to do? I said, we've got to move forward. So as much as I was disappointed, I understood totally why. And I, I know it was a big decision for him because he loved his time here. But you've got to move on. You've got to move on. And you, you can't stand there and cry your eyes out and think, how are we going to replace? We've got to replace this guy. It's as simple as that. And he's not going to be an easy guy with the whole package to replace. But we have some strong leadership in this team already. And I think we've really added to that well this year. Just to conclude, the year ahead, it's not just a one or two horse race as this league has been over many years. You, you mentioned four or five clubs earlier. Cardiff have set new standards now that we have to match. The way the conferencing system is, is built up, it's going to be, every night, an incredible year. This league has just grown and grown. And Guildford, Milton Keynes, signing quality, good teams. There's no such thing as an easy run here, is there? No, I think there have been you know, two great additions for the league because I think two stable clubs, two good fan bases. And uh, we can see with, the, with the, you know, the level of player that both these teams are signing that, that they're going to be a great addition to the league. And where, you know, where maybe our conference is going to be very much a four-line, tough, tough, physical conference. It's a little bit different. Scotland's a little more open, you know. And maybe the, the South Conference, the, the Patton, Patton yeah. Conference, will maybe follow along that lines a little bit more. I don't know. You, you have to see how it evolves. But if you don't turn up, David, if you're not prepared, if you're not ready, you don't win in this league. You know, there's teams, there's, there's, there's leagues in Italy, Austria, and you know where the top four teams uh, and the bottom teams just don't get a look. It, that doesn't happen here anymore. It really doesn't. One of the best games of hockey last year that we played was, uh, I think, we won a close one in Edinburgh. Unbelievable, back to back, end to end game of hockey. You know, and even as a coach, you've enjoyed it. So you can't turn off here. And uh, so I don't know how the conferencing systems are going to work out to the overall league title. You know my views on on playoffs. I think a lot of the people that are involved in making the decisions of this sport don't really understand the playoff side of things or don't want to understand the playoff side of things. And I can understand us doing the final four. I understand totally why, you know, it's done from a financial point of view. And it is an unbelievable event. You know, the memories we have this year from yeah. winning there. I mean, the, the last shot of the game goes in and just makes you summer. But I would like, I would love to see a proper best of series prior. If that's the finale, that's what it is. That's British hockey. It's unique. It's great. I don't have a problem with that. But the quarterfinal may be a best I, of three, I would five. like. Well, I'd like some best of fives going in yeah. to that point. Maybe a couple of rounds to get to the final four. And, uh, but that's just me because, you know, I've been involved with it in Europe and, and you can see what it's about and what it means. And, but that's, uh, that's not my decision. So, so the league title, I, I don't know how that will pan out this year with the conferences. I don't know. But we're going to do everything we can to try and get that back. I mean, we've had unbelievable success over the last four years. It's not easy to win here anymore. It's not easy to win in the UK anymore. Not consistently win. And that's why what we've talked about, chasing that edge and doing what we're doing. And every other club's doing it. We're not the only ones. Yeah. We've got to make sure that we're the leaders in all these areas to give us that opportunity to go on and be successful.